Chapter 13, The Magic of Colour There are many things you come up against in your daily life that are necessary to you if you would work magic. I have told you about the flowers and perhaps you have never thought of them that way before and colour is another thing that is of vital importance. Let us first consider colour and how it radiates an aura around each individual. It is invisible to the eye unless you are clairvoyant. The aura extends in a radius of about four feet. Though a very enlightened soul may have an aura several yards in diameter. All colours seen in the auric centre possess a definite interpretation. And those who have studied this sort of thing can give one look at you and reveal many truths. By loving everybody, you develop the rose-pink colour of loving-kindness in your aura. And this colour attracts, whereas dull colours are negative and can only attract ill health and harm. You link yourself with others who have this dullness in their aura and you take on their ills and worries, then wonder why you are not feeling so bright. By doing and thinking only those things which will give your aura that rose pink glow, you are protecting yourself against all that is bad, to make sure that nothing and nobody can penetrate this condition, cross one foot over the other and close your hands. Your centre is then closed and nothing can disturb you until you unloose yourself, unfold your arms and uncross your feet, legs and feet, but you must be on your guard, immediately cutting off when necessary. I would like you to remember this. It is so easy to do, yet so valuable. The more clear, clean and beautiful you can make your aura, the more you can work magic. Colour must be one of the first needs in your life. If you are feeling fed up and depressed, that means that you are simply surrounding yourself with the wrong colours. How colourful is your world? Have you ever thought about it? Don't accept drabness. When colour enlivens your environment, depression drifts away. When you are bored, you cut yourself off from that power which works magic, so determined to capture the tonic effect of colour. Colour has a great effect upon you, for good or bad. It can have an effect upon you in the decoration of your home, in the things you use every day, the colour of your car, your pen, your motor yacht, your suit, indeed everything you possess. It can affect your whole outlook on life. You vibrate to a particular ray, to a particular ray, and express the characteristics of that ray. Babies react to vivid colours, and their reaction expands as we grow up. An experiment was recently carried out where small children were put in a grey walled room and others in a yellow room. The yellows were completely free of illness, but the greys were coughing and sneezing and generally run down. There is a super hospital at Munich in which every room is a different colour. It was here where they took the survivors of the Manchester United football team after the terrible air crash. I think this idea of every room being a different colour is splendid and sane because colour can make all the difference between life and death, as this hospital realised. The study where you go to meditate should have walls decorated in your favourite colour. You can have it in violet if you like, which is the lightest and best vibration colour. In 1947, British Airways noticed that many of the passengers suffered from air sickness. The plane was decorated in yellow. They changed it to sky blue, and there was a very marked improvement at once. Go back to the aura. There is a wonderful sea of colour around each individual and when you have learned how to magnetise conditions then you discover the secret of demonstration. You are attracted to that which you are in tune with, in sync with, in vibration with. The colour you wear attracts or repels. Your body needs sunlight which gives you ultraviolet and infrared treatment. To obtain sunlight, one does not have to see the sun actually shining. The sun is shining on a rainy day, as you would see if you went high up in an airplane. 
The body needs colour as well as sunshine, and there is no excuse these days for not having plenty of colour around you. If you do not look after your body and give it what it wants, how can you ever expect to work magic? You must be healthy, and you must pay attention to colour, you must have an awareness, you must be aware of the power of radiation. We so often make our climate the scapegoat for dull and drab colour schemes. A French artist once called the English colourblind. The Italians will use underwater colours, violet, sapphire, turquoise, aquamarine, coral, ice cream pink and yellow. They put pink against scarlet, red against orange and colours we would not dream of putting together. Now if you ever studied the colours in the shop windows from Milan to Rome, they specialise in one colour displays and it makes you feel very eager to have that one particular colour because it is so vital and attractive. The punch of these underwater colours impels you to buy. They are marvellous. What the Italians do with colour is an education. It was Ruskin who said, The purest and the most thoughtful minds are those which love colour the most. A man who directs racing on television programmes told me he is still surprised by one thing in his job. He spends a long time cooped up in the control panel of the scanner van directing the cameras. But every time I come out I am amazed at the lovely colours of a race course, he said. The green grass, white rails and stands, the colour of the horses and the jockeys racing silks. It is a wonderful spectacle. One day it will make beautiful colour television. Did you notice colour when you were out? You should, and you should go where colour predominates. Like parks with beautiful colour flowers, art galleries, look in jeweler shop windows. Greyhound racing, brackets their little colour jackets racing by. The kilts of Bonnie Scotland, or the spectacle of a music show. Here you see lavish colour which takes your breath away, and is exciting just to look at. People go to musical shows to get out of themselves, to get away from the monotony and dreariness of everyday routine. The beauty of colour dresses in movement, such as one sees when dancers spin in a blaze of coloured light, produces an exhilarating effect upon an audience, which is unique and exotic. A feast for the eyes. In the hands of an imaginative producer, the theatre can give us colour and spectacle that can do to us a power of good. Are you seeing enough colour? One of the most pathetic spectacles is the man or woman whose mind is closed to the beauty and romance of colour. Everyone who strives for more and more colour lives more happily because besides one's real life, one also lives a fairy tale life. I recall the yards and yards of coloured tulle worn on the petticoats worn by dancers beneath gorgeous bouffant skirts. It all looks so frothy and enchanting as they float over the stage. See what I mean? Colour makes you a little more real, a little more lovely and a little more dear to everyone you meet. That's magic. Do you wear coloured shoes? Have you a coloured umbrella, a pair of gloves or a coloured Macintosh? Do you cook in coloured saucepans? Drink from coloured glasses, wash with a coloured sponge, and dry yourself with a coloured towel. Do you sleep in coloured sheets? Are your night clothes bright? Are your slippers gay? Is your car and your travelling case a colour that cheers? There are thousands of people wanting to be a mental magician, but few of them turn to colour. Your day should be full of fascinating colours, your favourite colour predominating. Have you seen the sun shining through coloured glass ornaments? It is beautiful. Coloured glass attracts the light with a brilliance undreamed of, and these colours help to bring magic into your life. And you should visualise colours. Get small pieces of silks or satins of very vivid colours and some of pastel shades. Clip them together. Concentrate on certain colours. Look at them. Think of them. Draw power from them. Look at violet or amethyst if you want to reach a higher dimension, to purify your mind or solve a problem. If it's money and abundance you want, 
concentrate on the little square of emerald green silk. Look at these little pieces of colored silk daily until you become completely color conscious, until you feel within you the urge to have plenty of color in your environment and on your body, until you become aware of the value of color. Can the colors you, you wear affect you? It can. One color can bring a person look, while the same color can be harmful to another. It depends on your particular ray. Quote, the wearing of emerald green has always brought me immense good luck, unquote, said a lady otter. But scarlet brings me bad luck, like the time I was wearing a scarlet dress and broke my arm. This lady wrote a book which was rejected by the publishers. But she sent it back immediately in an emerald green cover and it was accepted. Don't ask me to explain it. Emerald green is that particular lady's magic colour and you have colours that are magic too. John Slater, the famous stage and television actor, says When it comes to television, you won't find me, find me wearing green again. Then he goes on. It wasn't easy getting into television. I tried over and over again, but misfortune pursued me. Time and time again, I missed my chance of appearing on the screen through bad luck. He continues. Then one day it dawned on me. I came to realise that all the things I had worn at Lime Grove were green. Green tie, green pullover, green socks. So I decided to try another colour. I went to see the producers again, with not even the tiniest spot of green anywhere. What happened? My look changed immediately. I realise that colour can influence one's life. How could I believe otherwise? Barbara Cartland, with many romantic novels to her credit, says, Green is very lucky for me. Colour means nothing to some people. The sort of people who don't like animals, flowers, music or the laughter of little children. But colour is magic. and can influence your life. And the marvellous power of colour vibration can dissolve many of our ills. Just look to nature, look at the abundance of colour, rich, vibrant colours all throughout nature. The fall, summer, leaves, all the different shades. Just as the ancients recognised colour as a master science, so can we study it and turn to it as a cure. It is a proven fact that by the right use of colour, we can rebuild our body. Do you suffer from neurosis, a result of this age of speedy living? You can find new health through the stimulating and soothing effect of colour prescription. Your world should be full of colour, the particular shades essential to your health and happiness. It is impossible to be happy, continually optimistic and possess a positive mind if you surround yourself with depressing, mournful, drab colours. The atmosphere of the world and your own well-being can be changed from the lower dimension to the higher by the right use of colour. Melancholia and acute depression have been commonly cured by synchronised colour. At the Chicago State Hospital for the Insane, an apparatus called Colorama, Colorama has been used, which throws upon the screen abstract patterns of rainbow colours, constantly melting into one colour. This appeal to the eye has proven most wonderfully beneficial to the patients. Many modern cinemas show a similar colour screen prior to the pictures. It bathes, relaxes and refreshes, soothes the tired mind. Pure blood red is used quite frequently for healing. It is very good for the circulation of the blood and restores vitality. If you are feeling fed up and want your vitality restored, put on scarlet slippers or place a bowl of scarlet flowers somewhere prominent. Red roses, the magic will come. You will soon begin to feel alive again. There was the case of the doctor who believed in the power of colour to heal and he used it on a boy of eight years who was almost totally paralysed. He robed the boy in white, and then used strong light baths. At the end of three weeks, the child could walk, 
color has a positive therapeutic value and if you use freely enough can cure dyspepsia by wearing red garments the color has actually been proved to seep into the skin and make a man strong and dynamic raymond Twyford, the famous new york tailor developed acute stomach trouble but doctors could find nothing wrong then one day he put on a scarlet hunting coat and felt so exhilarated that he began to wear vibrant ties, socks, pyjamas, skirts and dressing gowns. His stomach trouble vanished. Colour that works magic had cured him. Scarlet cloth, particularly flannel, is highly recommended for lumbago and all cases of rheumatism. All sufferers from this distressing complaint should try the magic of scarlet flannel, the brightest colour possible. Once you have proof all your own, nothing can shake your conviction, but you have never given it a thought, perhaps never believed that there is magic in colour. Those who suffer from sleeplessness should try sleeping in a blue room. If the walls are the wrong shade, try flooding the room with blue lights. Turquoise blue is the most helpful colour if you suffer from headaches. Green is employed for the decoration of eye hospitals because green is most helpful to the sight. Yellow is invigorating and acts on the nerves and brain. If you have a worrying problem, this colour will help you. Violet is electrical and can be used as a tonic. The higher the vibration, the more powerful it is. Violet is a powerful colour. X-rays, which are above the violet, enable us to see through things. An extremely nervous person will benefit if they wear the colour amethyst. Also let, let, let them live in a room where purples, mauve or heliotrope are the chief colours and choose their clothes of the same shade. In all the most modern mental institutions, mauve or heliotrope is the colour used for the decoration of the rooms in which acutely nervous cases are treated since those colours are the most soothing and healing to the mind. Shades ranging from violet to purple are excellent in cases of hysteria. Nature emphasises the importance of colour, and it is best to live as near to nature as you can. Imagine a world without the green of the fields, the blues of the skies, the red breast of a robin, the gold of the coach of a king. You should see as much colour as you can, the beautiful Taj Mahal, Inlaid with precious stones, jewels of marvellous colours that change their tints with the setting sun. And I think of one of the smallest pictures in the Tate Gallery, which shows some ex exquisite colours that it attracts more attention than any other picture. And tremendous sums of money have been offered to it. Quote, the debt of Chatterton, unquote, has to be seen to be, be believed. It is indescribably lovely. The young poet's magnificent, flaming red hair, the blue of his breeches, so unlike any other blue. Why, nobody could gaze at such a pitter, picture without being deeply moved by its colour. What would the children do if Santa Claus was not dressed in red? Confront any man with a row of pretty girls. Put each in different colour dresses and at, ask him which looks the prettiest. I'm a mind reader and I know. He'll say, who's that girl in blue? It is psychology. Blue is a winner with men. She adores forget-me-nots, bluebells, blue hyacinths, blue flowers of every kind. Do you feel nostalgic when you hear the music Blue Skies? Of course you do. Blue has a magic all its own. As a magician, I have many times drawn coloured silk handkerchiefs out of the tube container. There is nothing to it, but the audience applaud. They love the colours. All magicians use colour in their performances. Magic and colour go together. You should have plenty of colour in your diet. The most colourful food is the most nourishing. Glowing red tomatoes, yellow melons and grapefruit, green and red apples, deep blue grapes, red cherries, pink shrimps, blueberries, etc. And so on. There are thousands of people longing to make the greatest success of their lives yet few of them turn to colour. You should start the day with plenty of colour. 
An English breakfast, particularly now women go out to work, is usually the most neglected meal of the day. It is a rushed affair with no thought to the colour. Quote, oh, breakfast doesn't matter, it can be served anyhow, unquote. This is fateful. You should give consideration to the first meal of the day, not only to what you are going to eat, but how it is laid out. Is there any colour, a coloured cloth or flowers on the table? Are there cups and saucers and plates a pretty colour? The colours you begin the day with will determine the pleasure and prosperity you will get out of it. So begin with plenty of colour. Do you open your eyes to colour in the bedroom? Colour simply must be introduced the moment you wake up. Don't you realise that? Have you ever given it a thought? When we were very young, we were attracted to coloured toys. A yellow teddy bear, a red train, a blue motor car. Colour is the one thing that little ones really notice. A child faddy about drinking anything will often drink from a coloured pitcher and like it. A child who won't eat eggs often enjoys it if the shell is painted a pretty colour. A mother whose baby son would not eat rice pudding made it pink one day with a touch of cock and kneel, and the child cleaned his plate and asked for more. This is perfectly true. All children respond to colour. So do you, only you refuse to realise it. Colour has its source in light. And in the beginning, the great psychologist said, let there be light. In other words, let there be colour. You vibrate in response to colour, and you have to learn to tune into the dominant colour that you respond to upon your own particular array. You must place colour as one of the first needs in your life because of its magic power. You must use colour in your diet if you want to be healthy. See it in your home, in your clothes and in every phase of your life. You must have colour awareness. All you need to recapture the exciting effect the colour had for you as a child is a rekindling of interest in it. Make your world a colourful place to live in and you will be exuberant, vibrant, alive, scintillating being. Goth said, quote, Every individual colour makes on men an impression of its own and thereby reveals its nature to the eye as well as to the mind. This, of course, course is right. Christmas, when people are at their happiest and best, is always a riot of colour. The party dresses, the paper hats, balloons, crackers, garlands, gifts and cards, coloured lights and the Christmas tree, bright toys, flowers of every hue, everything gay with plenty of colour. There is goodwill towards all, not only because it is a religious festival, but because of the magic that colour brings. Colour plays a real part in some of my performances. Some of you have seen me on stage, handling a stranger a long narrow box, in which is placed six, six coloured balls. I stand with my back to the stranger and close my eyes. Then I ask him to choose which ball he fancies and put it in his right hand pocket. Now choose another and put it in his left hand pocket and so on. Then I turn to face the stranger. In your right hand you have a red ball. He draws it out and holds it up for the audience to see. Correct. In your left hand you have a green ball. He draws it out of his pocket and I am right again. I tell him the colour of the ball which he has left in the box, although I cannot see it, and I am correct again. I have never been wrong. I like working with colours, and I always know the colour a person has chosen.